King of Travel, we love your channel. People really crack me up with how confused they are about life. Let's normalize being real and not fake. You can have healthy relationships with people you don't sleep mm -hmm. with. And at the end okay, of the day... Okay, so, so flag on the plate. Let me ask you this. So you no, say no, we no, start no, off with right. friendship. Okay, Let's say we start off with a friendship, but then I, don't, so I start catching feelings for you. So well, now you tell me, with, well, well I do what I want to do because we just friends. So now I'm feeling some type of way. How you go about that? When you're in that friendship, but the feelings ain't mutual, you still technically her friend or his friend. Somebody just ain't got on the same page. The feelings ain't mutual with the other person. Then you got your leeway to leave. You can burn the friendship. You can you can stop talking to friends. Yeah, because I see people try to be friends and it's like, well, let's take a little more time. Let's continue to be friends and let's build. Now nah, I want something serious. Now nah, in your way, yo, hold on. So I'm not so you so basically I'm not your girlfriend yet. I'm not yo, cut we just trying to friends. be friends. Yeah, yeah, but some people will walk away, they'll be like, nah, because they'll feel like you're wasting their time. Take the benefits out of friends. Be friends. Don't have sex. Get to know each other, have fun. Let everything happen organically. So flag on the plate. Yeah, you take the you take that out, but then the person gonna be a little paranoid. Like who you sleeping with to get to have your fun to get your rocks off. Don't never have Who's sex the man? The start. Just be friends, get to know each other. Don't don't introduce sex. Let it happen naturally. Don't be like, Okay, oh, so how long dirty. how long should you be friends? So how long should you be friends? However long it takes. So in the meantime, do the man be getting pleased by the next woman and do the woman be getting pleased by another man? Yeah, if they want to. I mean, y'all just friends. Y'all don't have no commitment. Stop the madness, king of travel. The truth hurts. Okay, you just friends. If they're jealous, that means they want more than that. But not everybody going to be on the same page. If you get somebody, y'all friends, and y'all can have, you know, great communication, good conversations, and have fun and enjoy each other's time, and y'all know, like, what each other wants, and... Basically, your friend is a really decent person where she can read your dang old mind. Like, hey, I'm going to go to the store. I know my friend like these hot Cheetos. I'm going to get the hot Cheetos and some sodas. Stuff like that. Consideration. And then y'all might, you know, you might start loving them and want to be more than what it is. And y'all might be on the same page. I mean, you can feel it. You can feel somebody, you know, on the same page as you. Especially if y'all been friends for so long, you should be able to know your friend. So when y'all yeah, start yeah. having sex, y'all get the emotions confused with the logic. Wow. Well, some people, I mean, you could have sex with their mind. It ain't even about no sexual yeah, intercourse. That's why thought out as friends. You ain't got to physically touch. You know what? I hear you, but easier said than done. You know, people say that, but then as soon as they start as friends and then they want, they start getting attached, they want to talk to the person more and then they start feeling some type of way and then they, <laughs> like, yo. And as I mean, your friend, you might say, hey, you know, I kind of like you. I don't know if you like me like that. And then, hey, your friend will be like, well, I don't know. I don't see you that way. And boom, we still going to be friends. Now that I know you don't see me that way, I ain't even try to even... Go for well, what I want to do. Be friends now. That's it. No more, no less. I know my place. Hmm. So suppose he walk away. You just let him walk. It don't matter. That's okay. Just a friend. There ain't been no commitment. No emotionalness involved. None of that. I may feel sad, but I can get over that. It's not necessarily like a heartbreak. It's more of a mutual understanding. Mm. Like we was friends, somebody started feeling some type of way. I wasn't feeling like how they was feeling. Either we could still be friends or we could part ways. It ain't gonna hurt me. Mm. Especially yeah. if y'all having sex. It's definitely not gonna hurt. <laughs> That's why it's easy to walk away from friends. And it's hard to really walk away from a relationship. Because you got everything invested and involved. And you no know, investments in this friendship. I like you as a friend. I'm going to buy you some potato chips from the store, something to drink. That's only 2 or $3. That's not no major. So as soon as they tell you in a relationship, that's when more, that's when the sex and all that get involved. 
it's a mutual understanding. It's a mutual agreement, right? It's mutual. So listen, I'm gonna just say this. One person. You know what? You know what's so crazy about this? As soon as the man give y'all the title, the sex get involved. But that don't mean nothing. We gotta give each other the title. It ain't just be no one person. I may not like you, or you may not like me. We just because the person didn't give you the title. The title yeah. means so much. Because at least if you friends, this person gonna vent to you about their past relationships or their current relationships. Now you get to know who you really are. How you deal with these situations. You might dog people out and I might still be your friend, but I ain't mess with you because you might dog me out next. <laughs> so I want to say this to you. I definitely respect the fact that um, y'all want the title. Ain't but you don't think you had enough even... It's even if you, you don't think you had enough experience even from your past to know a lot of titles fake? Mm. It's fake when somebody lying to you and you believe in it. That's like creating a fiction story. That's fake. Now, if somebody just come and you being friends or whatever, and I get to know you for a long time before I make any type of stupid decisions, then I'll be a little bit more, I guess, at ease. Cause you can understand, you can kind of tell if your friend lying or not. If you know the person, you get to take your time and get to know this person. You can you can tell people lying. Sometimes, like if you rush into a relationship and you really don't know the person, you might say, "Oh yeah, me and her went out on a date one week and we dating the next week." I don't really know you. I only know what you tell me. But if I've been friends with you for maybe a year or longer, and I hang out with you consistently, I'm gonna be able to know you and read you. Because I'm gonna be honest with you, I feel like y'all. Y'all women fall for titles. Like titles, titles mean so much to y'all. Like, and it's almost like y'all. I don't know. I just have seen this too much. As long as you got the title, you willing to do more. But I feel like the title is a delusion. You got men who be trying to put titles on people all the time. They both delusional. They're trying to force a title on something. You can't force nothing. Stop forcing things. Things don't never work out well when you force them. You get exactly what you're looking for. Mm. I learned from experience. I go on looking for love and I find fake love. And boom, Ain't you find fake love. I found fake love. Because I you just wanted exactly so let me ask you a question. When you have found that fake love, did you had did you have these thoughts in your mind of in the white wedding dress, walking down the aisle, living this happy life and this wifey. Did you have a picture painted in the back of your mind? I did a little bit. <laughs> but I've been young. I understand. Okay, it listen to me. Experience. So, I rushed. I had got out of a relationship and I hopped back into one because that's not what I was used to doing. I, I take the time to get to know myself and what I want. But now that I have... Favor. Come in the middle of the camera. Come in the middle of the camera. Let's talk about this. This yes. me, this me, who me and you, me and you talking right quick. <laughs> so you pretty much you had these thoughts in your head about what a relationship supposed to be like. Yes, I had the thoughts that I wanted as a child to get Hold to up. my future children. And I respect that, but I had who my taught life you? Out. This is how I had my life planned out. I was, I got out of high school. I gave myself a year because I used to hate school. So I got accepted into college when I was 20 years old. Yeah, I just had turned 20. I would have done my two year nursing program, work, travel the world, get married at 25. I mean, get, yeah, get married at 25 and have my first child by 27. I think 27 is a decent age to have a child. 25 is good, and you can travel and have fun and get that out your system and then create a family. But so I def- say went that way, I got looked at and got pregnant quick. So, so I want to say this to you. And but before I got, well, when I got pregnant, I didn't want to have a child. I gave mm-hmm. the person a choice to be a father or not. You had a choice. I love my children, and I'm glad they're here, but I wasn't ready. I know I wasn't ready. So by giving you a choice, I had to adapt within nine months. Okay. 
I'm about to be a mama. I got to do all this stuff. I got to take responsibility. I got to get my own place. I got to make sure my children got a roof over the head, water, food, clothes, diapers, breastfeeding. Make sure I have to get, you know, drinks in my system and stay hydrated. That's a that's a large adaptment for somebody who's young. I didn't even get to get the funness out. Like, I just been starting my life. So let me ask you a question. You came into this world mm -hmm. not knowing anything about this world. Mm -hmm. This is a dark world. Who painted this picture to you of the marriage and stuff? Did you see this stuff on TV? Did mama bring it to you? Like, what, what made you think at the age of 27, I want to do this and do that? Where did all this come from? By me and my mental state that's saying, hmm, once I get my nursing degree, I'm going to travel, save my money and stuff like that. So I'll have a stable foundation, be financially stable to provide for my child so they can have a good life. But mine, I did everything backwards, but I still did it, though. So, no, But you know what, though? I want to say this to you. A lot of people... What I saw growing up, I used to read a bunch of books. So mm -hmm. my mother was married two times her first husband had died then the second one he, you know he passed away but not like soon or whatever she my mom she was married at i think the age of 20. so the way she grew up yeah she got married to her first husband he died maybe a year or two later and then she got remarried so they had separated they still was legally married but they separated because he had this on messed up stuff and my mama can tolerate certain stuff which i commend her on because i don't put up with certain stuff learning from her um when you see things especially like you know you see movies you see stuff like oh yeah that's cute it looked good on paper but behind now you're talking themes. i'm listening so, to you now you're talking yeah i think it's beautiful to be married but you can't just rush into something if you don't know this person because people change and you're absolutely right. Yeah. It's, it's definitely beautiful to be married, but I want to say something to you. But the problem is that you, that person, you, that person for you and you said it best. You look at the movies and you look at the you look at the princess and the prince and everything looks so beautiful. But hold up now, it's a problem. Why didn't they show in the movies the number one key to any relationship is communication? Why didn't they show that their parents might have raised them different? Your parents raised you different. Give me something, So, 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 why didn't they look at this? And Khalil, let me you go and scrape this right now. So, Gail, you know what I'm saying? Me and Khalil having a real talk. So, just cool out a little bit, cause. So, this is the thing. Definitely looks pretty right there. Pretty model in the building. You know what I'm saying? Gail in the building. So, Khalil. <laughs> This is so what I'm gonna ask you. Why y'all be calling me that? Let him talk. Let him talk. Let him talk. So talk. you was taught. You looking at the movies. You looking at the soap operas and reading the all books. this beautiful They're picture. But hold up. Why wasn't you taught the number one key to any relationship? The number one before anything else is communication. Because we didn't why? have much communication in my house. So guess huh? what? So I had to learn to communicate on my own. My mom can tell you this right now. As much stuff as I used to talk cash money crap, and I had to learn to eat humble pie because for me, every reaction was going to get a reaction out of me. Mm. So I had to learn to be quiet and listen. So you start listening. Sometimes it's good to be quiet because I'm going to listen, and I'm going to listen to the BS you about to feed me, and I can hear it. I can see it. I can hear it. I can feel it. I use all my senses to God and give me. To understand people, people is full of crap, and then it's funny so, because so they I think want, that I want to ask you this. And you but said I, people I didn't have much communication in my house. Everybody, like when I got in trouble, I got in punishment for months. I've been on punishment for a whole year run, one time, and that's when I became rebellious. I said, "Shoot, I might as well do the bad stuff anyway because I'm gonna get in trouble anyway. I'm still punished. I've been on punishment to my birthday, Goldie, to my a whole year, but." When I used to get into all these fights, I always was technically the aggressor because they never want to hear my side of the story. So when I act out and act fool, that's because I wasn't given the attention that I need to be given or communication. Communicate with me. Let me tell you why I did these things. 
Don't just hop and skip on what somebody else said because y'all was not there. And I was fighting. Somebody was messing with me. And, of course, I had beat them up. So now I look like the aggressor, especially when it fights. I used to beat up on girls and dudes. And I used to play with knives. I don't bring so many knives to these little people. I don't bust people head with a brick. Mm. All because my mom ain't never really communicate with me. She always used to yell at me and punish me. But mm. then why I was reacting the way I reacted. I acted in self-defense. You not the play with me. In self-defense. Mm -hmm. So I want, I want to say this to you. And this is why I'm a realist when it comes to life. It's because I don't see what the world have told me. And I see a lot of it as a bunch of lies. Because if it was that easy, so many, the divorce rate won't be the way it is right now. People get uh, married because they, just, they see the little fancy stuff. Oh, I want the big wedding. They don't see the bigger picture. Why well, spend $60,000 on a wedding where you can put $60,000 down payment on a house for me if we can go out on vacation? I'm not wasting no preach, money. Preach. <laughs> preach. So all that yeah, right they there, they only do that so they can impress other people and be like, "Oh yeah, I got sixty thousand dollars spent on money. I bet you they're gonna be borrowing money next year to pay that mortgage mm. or that rent. You still renting and you paying sixty thousand dollars for a marriage? That don't add up. The math ain't math. Well, but see, you hear what you just money. said, but the problem is, maybe you feel like that, and that's great. But in a lot of situations, the issue is you can't communicate that to your partner. They don't understand that, like. If I can't oh, no. communicate that to my Oh, no, partner, you, our wedding got to be like this because so-and-so was on Facebook and look how her wedding is and this and that, this and that. Like, yo, wait a minute here now. You see what I'm saying? Like, where, where do the line draw? Like, I'm trying to explain to you that we shouldn't have to spend all this money. Why are we putting on a fashion show for people? And the you don't think that. The line draw for me is when the finances line draw at the bottom. When it, when it go like this from top to bottom, Mm -hmm. The bottom make me anxious. I get nervous. Oh my God, we below a certain amount, and especially if it's not an even number, y'all, I get crazy. I don't like having my finances under a certain amount. That make me feel like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm about to go broke. I'm not gonna have it. We ain't doing that. Go ahead, marry me at the courthouse and have a little small reception. People just want to impress other people, man. Just because you got mine on me, you guys tell everybody you got it. I feel like um, I just want I want my husband, my significant other, whether it's my it's always gonna be you. I'm always gonna choose you, but at the end of the day, with my significant other, I just want them to be able to be just as involved. I want them to be just as seen. I want all of their woes to be cast aside. I want their heart to be mine. I want my family to receive them as if they birthed. I would like their family to receive me as if they birthed. You want both families to accept you. And at the end of, but at the end of the day, I love you. friends are the family you choose, so choose your friends wisely. So if I have no one blood related to me, it doesn't mean I don't have my family there, but quality over quantity is what I, I am only accepting quality over quantity. I don't want you to come with anything but yourself. The humility lie with when a man cleave to the breast of a woman, I just want to be enough to make sure that, hey, baby, if you can't do it, let me be able to like put it up for six months. Or let me be able to take care of you. And you know what I mean? Like I want, yeah, I, I would love for the traditional way for it to work out. But at the end of the day, broke, but, at the, but at the end of the day, not wedding style. No, I'm. I'm. You I'm gonna, gonna go broke over yeah. things because guess what? Financial uh, reasons. Financial reasons is why a lot of relationships looks. fail. I just want. I want. Him, I just want him to be seen on his day or her to be seen mm -hmm. on her day, just as much as it was. I don't want it to be all about. It's our union. Mm -hmm. It's your side, my side, and the truth. You feel me? That's why people go. That's it. Broke. That's I don't. It. Want, I don't, don't want to be more. Like, I don't want to be more. Let me get this big wedding. Let me get that big. When you, it's like when you wear make when you wear makeup, you're supposed to enhance the beauty that you have. And I just want to bring out the better qualities of this man and or woman or maybe our polyamorous family or maybe our community or whatever it is. Um, I know you remember the you remember like the weakest link? Like I'm no I'm no better. I'm no better than anyone that day. 
everyone that day has taken heed to the fact that these two, if they go through something, you're very much as much, you are witness in front of all the witnesses. But I don't want it to be about me. I want it to be about us. So I want to enhance a new journey. And I take, I take very. And, and I you think, sure you, you sure that's the you still so you just saying that right now until you get in that relationship. Am I lying? <laughs> no, she ain't lying. Because I'm going to tell you, a lot of people have these thoughts on what they want it to be like, but the minute they have a little altercation, everything changed. That's because they brainwashed. They're going out <laughs> what they see. They see the social media. They see the Kim Kardashian, 60, 100,000, million dollars in wedding. All my things. Beyonce, like that. $10 million ring. Hey, y'all don't know what's up. I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm going to take y'all in the deeps of things yeah, right quick, right? right? So, listen, I'm going to say this is my opinion of what I feel about weddings and stuff. And it, is, it could be a beautiful occasion, but I noticed something. Let's go to Facebook for a minute. Anytime somebody posts a wedding or anything to deal with that wedding, it's on the news feed. And it just goes where everybody could see. But when you post your business, Ain't hardly nobody seen because they ain't putting it on the news feed. Do you feel like the social media promotes that the people, the hype people, so everybody could see, so they could be like, "Oh, I want to have a wedding just like so and so." Oh man, that's so beautiful. The next thing you know, instead of the person thinking to themselves, "I'm still building with my partner," they looking at all this stuff through the social media, pumping our minds up. Then we forget. And we're looking okay. at everybody else and not looking at what, what we have within ourselves and what we got with our partner. Do you think that brainwashes us sometimes? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, I'm going to say yes and no, just to answer the question right now. But, okay, what is, what is if money wasn't an option, if money wasn't an option, baby, because you're asking me this question and not to answer a question with a question, but I say yes and no, so I answer. I want to know, what would your dream wedding consist of? What would, where's my baby? None. King of Travel, we love your channel. People really crack me up with how confused they are about life. Let's normalize being real and not fake. What? Well, listen. Li Let's go on a vacation somewhere. We just pretend we get married. It is what it is. I mean, so you you don't really you don't value you don't value that commitment, and so I would like to say this respectfully. And maybe probably disrespectfully because I'm not sure how you're gonna take it or if you're gonna come it's out high. and back on me. But like you're just as much the problem because what happens is we just have to do the shadow work. You're not the problem. I'm just being facetious. Calm down. What you have to do is take a look in yourself because you deserve that. I deserve to look at you and say, hey, if we cool and we go out and and I and you you talking to a chick or whatever and I go into the bathroom and old girl's like, oh, I'm gonna get what the fuck I want to see me. I'm gonna get what I want to get out of him. I want to get. And I realize you feeling her, feeling her, but then I see a different side of her. I'm going to be your wingman because I don't want anybody to harm you because guess what you have to take care of? Your mouth and the other mouths of your body. I want you to know that there are good people and we don't even have to sit together. The thing I want for you is prosperity and blessings. Now, if I see you trying to hunt, do, 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 so and so and so, I'm always, what, this, this, life, this life we live in deserves more respect given to both sides. Oh, let me get that light on. Like, if we just deserve it. Like we deserve it, you deserve it. Why wouldn't I stop? So, 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 why we got to get to the point? Like, if I'm already treating you good, why we got to get married? Like, what's the biggie? Well, I think that it doesn't have to be a sense of the law. I think that there should, again, reverting all the way back to the beginning of our conversation. I was saying that there need to be some type of boundary. Um, that needed to be set. Um, if those boundaries are being set and they're being met, there still comes a time where there needs to be some type of conclusivity, uh, like some conclusivity, and there needs to be something holding it all together, and just knowing. But, but marriage don't make it hold together. Well, it has to be a bond between you and your significant other. Now, I'm not saying marriage is not the same for everyone. Back in the day, we didn't, we weren't able to have these extravagant weddings. So what I'd like to say is, I don't, I don't want to be married in no church. I'm never going to be in anybody's church or mosque or um, synagogue or or temple or um, I'm not doing that. I'm going to be outside, and I'm very much just trying to engage with 
my marriage is with myself, my vows of celibacy or my vows of, um, you know, silence or my vows of, you know, excuse me, just being self, eating better, taking things out of my diet, um, trying new things, like writing down in my journal, making sure that I'm, I'm not I'm not here for a good or a long time. I have a purpose and, and, and that is to be sharing this with you. Like there's there's no right or wrong way to do it. There's no but I just say that because true. because the thing is is to me, if I'm already treating you good and we connect then why we gotta let this world we live in hype us up to make us feel you don't love me because you ain't marry me. That's a lie. What what that have to do with my love for you? Why do you feel like you wouldn't want to subject yourself to someone and say i want you okay in your mind you're saying i'm treating you good but you don't want it to be an outward reflection of what you're promising like i'm not saying get married as in you have to you know mm -hmm. the whole law i'm not saying the whole law thing but i'm saying here um here's a push gift here is a you know, it don't matter what, like, is there something that signifies that you are, that's something that's I'm just- I'm treating between, you good. That's not enough. You're just, you're just <laughs> basically doing the bare minimum. Cause I'm treating you good? Yeah. Because so I basically, when, because suppose the word marriage never existed, we never heard about it, how would we know to do it? Well, I'm asking you, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying, or what I'm asking is something that's just between, you and your significant other that would signify that it was just you two. Now, there's no marriage involved. I'm not using the, the I'm treating you like a queen. That's all you need. Okay. I'm going to take that because there's no other way I'm going to stand on it. I'm just going to let you have that. Um, I'm communicating with you. Anything you, if you need, I make sure I'm there for you. I got your what back. Would make you, what would make you feel whole and make you feel like you're the only one and she doesn't want anyone else but you and like everything that, that your other person does is, is just specifically for you, no one else. No one else get these hugs. Like, like what would you know deep in your heart of heart? What, what would this signify how I would that? Know. We go through something, her whole energy is... It's to communicate with me about it. Let's go over things. Let's sort things out because I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. And let's come together with agreements to keep our foundation solid. That's all I would need. Pretty much not a woman that she mad at me or I'm going to run this. I'm got girls night out. She mad at me. She going to do this and do that. It's all about communication because it's the turbulence in the relationship that causes things to go a scrape. But when the turbulence happened, we got two choices. We're going to build off of this turbulence and make things right amongst each other or we not. Marriage don't define none of that. No, it All doesn't. that hype, that fashion show doesn't define none of that. I'm no. treating you like a queen. And that's it. I will say that um, I will take a little bit more. I would take a little bit more um I take a little bit more convincing when it comes down to it because as Khalil and I were speaking about before about dowry, um, I, I've, I've seen parts of Islam and parts of Catholicism that, you know, I expect a dowry. Like I, flag on the I, I, I want to ask Khalil a question. Khalil, please come to the camera right quick. Let me see what's up with you. If I'm treating you like a queen mm -hmm. and you ain't, I'm making sure you good. But your man thing, you keep coming to me saying you want to get married. And I said, listen, all that ain't called for. What you going to do? It depends on the situation. For me, I would like to be married. But if we come to a mutual understanding and agreement and we get older, for example, if we got older and stuff and I had to make something like a life, like a life changing thing for you. Like, we don't necessarily have to be married, but what rights do I have over you if something was to happen? Like, would you give me rights over you? Like, power of attorney? What happens yeah, to yeah. your finances? Go if I, if I could give you rights, if, so let me ask you something. So you can't give nobody no rights in the system over you unless you're married? That's what you're saying? Okay. If you are married, 
the, the wife or the husband, if something life like life threatening happened to you, somebody got to make a decision over you where you can't make your own decisions. Somebody has to call that shot. So anything can, can, can I, without without being married, can I tell them that I want you to make the decisions? Yeah, but it has to be in a, in a no, legally binding contract. Exactly. OK, so that would be fine. I don't mind doing that. Okay, then I don't mind getting married. I mean, not getting married. If I can have those rights without the without the marriage license, I want to be able to, you know, call shots of you if something wants to happen or... Okay, or, and, that, and that's respect. You might, have, that's... you might have had a lot of money, and guess what? If I don't have certain rights over you, your money going to the system. It's the government. Okay, I, I definitely could respect that part. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or the biggest thing I was just telling... Um... And... Sorry. No, nah, because the biggest thing I was just telling Gail that if I'm treating you like a queen, what does marriage that has nothing to do with it? I mean, if I'm already treating you good, we don't have to go through all that. That's just how I feel. So you can either get married and still have the rights, or you can give that person legal rights over you. But marriage does hold some type of some type of some type of bond, some type of strength, when it comes to legal things after. So that's it. All the based upon is the legal, the legal aspect. Technically, yeah. If you got life insurance, well, if I had life insurance on you, and something happened, and I got to provide and take care of the kids, I got to be able to get some type of some type of stability out of that. If something was to happen to you and I got to change my life drastically and somebody died or got really sick, I got to be able to have those funds to take care of you or you take care of me. <laughs> but if you don't, like, some people, like, some people, I know a person, they were married, but I don't think the husband had, like, what is it, power of attorney over them, so they can't really get the life insurance because ain't nobody had power of attorney over them, the money going to the system. I think it's called a it's called a, a rebate or something like that. Mm. So, some of those things do play a, you know a huge part of stuff. Mm. You know, I am dead and gone, and guess what? You ain't got no money out of it to take care of the kids. Now you gotta wait, wait five six years for a rebate, and the, the courts make the decision. I don't want no court making decision over my spouse or somebody who had life. I want to be able to make those decisions because I want to respect what you want me to do. If something was to happen to you and I honor that. And that's for definitely example, understandable. Like, for example, like my my real mom, my my grandmother didn't have power of attorney over her. She couldn't choose whether how my mom was gonna be buried. My mom got buried by the state. My mom is a Muslim. Muslims don't believe in caskets and waiting seven days and being embalmed and all that extra stuff. They believe in, you know, you come with in this world with your organs you're going out with your organs you're being wrapped up and you're going under the ground within 24 hours before your body start decaying and rotten so people got different religious values too so you might say hey i won't be you know burnt in my throw my ashes in the ocean guess what the state got you the state gonna do whatever they want to do with you they won't be make you a science experiment they can they, they won't sell your organs and donate it they can they can violate your body your dead corpse. Mm. And ain't nobody got no say so of you because either you're not married or y'all don't have a legal binding contract on what's going to happen or who called the shots. Because half the time, a lot of these people, they're dead and gone. Their kids can't make decisions over them because ain't nobody got the you know power of attorney or the upper hand when it comes to that situation. Now you're being buried by a state. So... When I die, gotcha. I want a Muslim funeral. I don't care. <laughs> I don't, I'm not an organ donor. It's not on my license. Please check my body before I go down. Make sure my organs in me. Yeah, and, and, I, and that's what I'm saying. You know, the bigger picture is we live in a world that's um, there's so many different distractions out here. You know, we're religions and I call the wedding fashion shows and if you don't do it this way or that way, this person don't love you. If you don't, if you don't buy my religion, you do this, you that, like all these are different delusions 
painted in front of us that put us in a position that we don't see the bigger picture in a lot of situations. And that's why, like I said, it all boils down to what does all that other stuff matter if I'm treating you good? If I could get the power of attorney, whatever, I'll do all that. But it all boils down to just seeing the bigger picture. And I think that's one of the biggest distractions. Did you, did you have a two-parent home? Yeah, I sure did. You did? And they were never married, correct? No, they were married. But it didn't mean nothing. It didn't mean anything because you saw him and her disrespect each other, right? Like every other so, parent disrespect each other. <laughs> I don't I don't mean to be insensitive about what I'm saying to you because I'm 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 being genuine and sincere because when she came out about what she was saying, that was a touching moment. And the reason I'm asking this is because I'm listening to it and you keep reiterating, what does that mean if I'm treating you good? So that's why I asked you, did you grow up in a two parent home? You said yes I did. And then you you deterred by saying, but not like that's why you said, if I'm treating you good, what does it matter? You told me just now, um, what did it matter that they were married? Because they were harming one another. Because they never sat back in. I'm not sure how the love became, but I'm glad you're here from it. I'm glad that you're able to speak out about things like this because of it. I'm glad that you're able to be a strong, proud father because of it. And I hope that every day of your life, you strive to be better, 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 and better, and better. And I'll do everything in my power to make sure we do this all together. But not having, what, what did Kanye say? Having everything is not having everything is. So when you see this kids, I used to, you know, I used to go to Stono Park and I used to be like, oh, where's my mom? I didn't meet my mom until I was 16. My father served three branches of the military, Army, Air Force, and Navy, um, was married to another woman, had my first two sisters, and, you know, and the Navy had me. Um, I was the black sheep, the kid out of wedlock, um, and I love my mother, although I know that, you know, I don't know much about her. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that my father sacrificed. I'm glad that I know love. I know love in a hardship form of love, and I know love in a form of, hey, I need you to be right here in place for this war. Like, it's just like playing chess, moving you around, having sick people or having obstacles in your way to be able to brain to, to solve problem solve and use your brain. But then sometimes say logic actually is built in emotion. But most of the time you have to be able to move constructively instead of feeling like everything is within criticism. So what I'm saying is the reason the reason having not marriage by law, by anyone's law, but a marriage, even though, you know, the slaves that were brought here, um, sometimes all they could do was have a little ceremony for themselves. Or it's almost like having an anniversary or you celebrate Valentine's Day or something like that. Every Valentine's Day, your child, no, it doesn't matter, your son, your daughter, whatever, they should be the first Valentine because time thank them for their love, for knowing a love that you've never known before. And when it comes down to women, I understand like, okay, a mother has one foot on the earth and one foot in the grave when we bring your soul through here. And I just, there, I want there to be more levels of respect because you know that Luna in the sky that you see is the tidal wave. I want you to respect and understand that the earth that we live on, if you put a seed in it, it grows because a woman grows that. But I want you to grow an understanding of so much love. And it's not what people did to you, but it's knowing that you're chosen. All of the arguing probably that our parents were doing or that we didn't see, that we never felt that love. I am willing to extend that. That don't fix what happened. But going into it saying like, oh, men and women from different countries, no, we're all going through something that's misunderstood. A lot of people from other countries probably had their best friends taken while they was walking on to a party. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Some people might have got shot down in their face and said, here, here, tell me the story. We don't, there is no pain that is greater than a, we have to be here for one another. So what I'm saying is like, it's, it's, it all comes back to be the change you want to see in the world. If you want more love, get more love. Your family, my family, all I wanted to do was see my parents in the same room, not kissing them, just in the same room. You know what I mean? And 
I went and said some disrespectful things to my mother after the passing of my father because she thought she was going to talk about him behind his back. And I, I cursed her out. I did apologize. But, like, you can't speak about the deceased. They have no, you know what I mean? So understanding what you're going through and not understanding at the same time. I just want to pick up where you don't have to ask me sometimes. And sometimes you're just going to, we're not going to know all the time. We're not always going to know. But if we can be there for one another and a, and a pause for respect for you, because you saw what you saw, but you can change that. We can change that. Us speaking right now, where two or more gather, there is fellowship. And there's plenty of people tuning into this live. There's plenty of people who are touching base and say, oh, I don't like what she's got to say, or that's so unprofessional and, you know, but at the end of the day, the biggest, the biggest point that we're trying to make right now is love is love is love. No man is greater than any woman. There is no seed that's not sown that will not get reaped. There is no, there is no up if you don't have below. If you have somebody start at the top of that ladder and they fall, they're not gonna know what to do. Opposed to the person who climbs every single day and they face adversity, they get pounded down a little and they get back up. There's nothing more. So I, I, I would like to say, I really appreciate you for bringing up a lot of this commentary. I think it's really beneficial for people to see that people can have their perspectives and their views and speak rationally and clearly without rah, 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 all over the you know what I mean mm -hmm. you speak your peace you have your peace and there's there's certain things that I hope that you realize that you deserve that love you deserve to have someone say it's just about you you deserve to have someone say I promise you this I I promise you this it, it can be a hey, every day on this thing or every six there is Whenever you want someone to know that it's just for you, what do you have with that other person or your other people? Because you may be in a polyamorous relationship, but you always got that bottom that brought you to here because love is love is love. It's not what you do. It's how you do it. Spread it genuinely and sincerely. You know what I mean? It's not what you do. Oh, I got all this love to give. Don't nobody want to hear you capping and then you want to keep it off for yourself. That's how you do it. You be in a quiet, be quiet, and you hand out your love. You know what I mean? Like, there's... There's nothing I can say. I, I've hurt people. <laughs> people have hurt me. So but going back to a question. You say you hurt people. People have hurt you. Right. Um, and that's what I'm talking about. Like, you know, life sometimes is full of a lot of, it's a gamble, man. Like, you just don't know what you get. You know what I'm saying? And, and I don't well, feel the toss tired. Up, the toss-up right, the toss-up right here is about a three hundred. I see a hundred, a hundred, a hundred. I like what I'm seeing right here. It's like, uh. anyway, the toss-up is good. My bad. Go ahead. Yeah. Word, word. <laughs> yeah. So I just, I just say in general, you know, living life and understanding what we face day to day, and there's just so many delusions painted out here, and I, and especially, I'm gonna tell you something, in America. What can we do as women in America, or um, to use your verbiage in America? What can we do? And I, I, I'm gonna use in America, in that. What can we do as women to articulate and communicate? Um, because everyone comes from different walks of life. You probably, um, I'm not sure your ethnic background or anything, but there's certain times that people are shunned for being who they are or not being enough of who they are. And so they have to be hard or they have to be this, or they're not enough. They're not this. What we, what can we do to articulate to as females to the male, how we want to be there for them or how we ask their love language or their communication skill, or, you know, without being overbearing or, you know, trying to degrade them or belittle them about, Oh, your status, your money, your, your, Cause she gotta listen. That 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 that's why for you. Whatever she say, go. I'll, I'll catch y'all at noon. Well, well from, I'll from what I done not see in a lot of situations, I think when it comes to a lot of y'all women, um, biggest thing is is communication. I'm gonna be real with you. Like I don't seen it too much. Y'all see y'all communicate. Are five, what are the five essences of communication for you, though? The, the five essences of communication is to listen and hear the man out of what he got to say. And I'm going to be real, I done seen in the too many cases, y'all don't do that. When a man tell y'all something, the, the main thing I always hear a woman say is whatever. Okay. Are y'all victims of that? Stop the madness, king of travel. The truth hurts. 
What what does that make you feel like when you hear the word whatever? Like how does whatever it make means you feel like you ain't had nothing I just said to you and you could care less about what I got to say. So we can use whatever less, and I, I get that. Yeah, definitely uh, whatever. Just hear what the man have to say, and when he said what he got to say, then you 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 your talks among each other to solve the problem. Okay. Because nobody, you know, the problem is with people. People just don't argue just for fun. It's usually a cause and an effect. Yes. But the problem is people, they don't want to hear it. Like, it's like, um, did you hear me? And then it's like they act like, I, do, I could care less to hear. But I don't believe, one thing I tell people all the time, just like if a man asks y'all to do something, right? A lot of times I think what happens with y'all, like, Y'all do it whenever y'all want to do it. Okay, I'll get to it whenever. Can we start and, to utilize can we start to utilize a little bit of language where we say what we mean and we mean what we say? I do want to say that I feel slightly impersonalized because y'all women, y'all do this, y'all girls, y'all do that. And at the end of the day, if you just say in your experience, I wouldn't feel, I guess, as a tech. Okay. I'm not trying I'll to play the Karen card right here, but I want to hear what you're saying. But when you say y'all, and I'm from the South, we use y'all all the time. Okay. So in my, what, like, I can't say in, this. in your prior in my, experience, you felt in my sense. experience, and, and I'm glad you said that. Because Thank you know you. what? This is what a lot of females like to say. Um, I'm not like every other woman. And guess what? That's what I'm hearing you saying right now. But from what I didn't see from my experience, I'm not new to this, I'm true to this. I done meet a lot of females in my past, and it's the same pattern over and over again. What have so you that's changed why about I say yourself to not? Uh, what have you changed about yourself to not subject yourself to that particular pattern? I was speaking about this prior. The same thing is, if you don't take that twenty questions and say, "How strong am I? What are my characteristics? What's my one, three, five year plan? Who am I willing to be? If I, if am, am I OCD, ACD? How do I feel about healthcare? What do I feel about more children? What's my favorite color? What am I? What, where do I want to travel to? Does this person like travel? Do they want to be in the south in the house? Do you like? Do you want them to be more firm, more feminine? Do you want them to be down with this part of your kinks or your fetishes? These are the things that you once you mastered self, you will understand. All the questions you're asking will be fixed. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't master self. And and guess what? All them all them stuff that where I would is, be asking myself. That's that's why I come to the realization it ain't worth relationship to me. And I ain't gonna play with a woman. I'm gonna be honest with you because guess what? Would you like a when male? All I'm not trying to be rude. I'm really not. Would you like a male? I'm really asking a real question. And I'm giving you a real answer. All right, bet her her. Cause I mean, if you could yell any louder, I got the telepathy right there. There you go. All right. I'm just... Yeah, I'm giving you a real answer. All right. I just want to say something. Mm -hmm. You keep saying you did say a lot that women don't hear. There's a difference. It's a difference from hearing and listening. Mm -hmm. I can hear you all day, but if you got my attention and be communicating, that's why I'm listening on how you feel. So. Mm -hmm. I had a problem with somebody just hearing me and hearing me and hearing me. And when stuff important came up, I bet you he said, you never told me that. That's because you heard me go on one ear and come and talk. Are you listening and understanding? Yeah, that's a better way to say it. Are you listening to the person? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's so tell me this, do y'all struggle with that? I don't struggle with that. I got people who struggle with it when I try to tell them things. Wait, 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 wait. My wait, experience. Wait, what's the question? Do y'all struggle with it, like you and I, or us within relationships or friendships? Or can you clarify the question? In a relationship, oh, well, I we, struggle we, with we, that. We, okay. When somebody just hear you, and then when you have to go pay a bill or something, or you need something, oh, I, you didn't tell me that. I feel yeah, like you heard me every day for thirty days. Now when this day come, when it's due, oh, you've never heard me for the last 29, 30 days. Y'all keep talking. Let me turn this thing off right quick. Yeah, I had a problem. Well, my I thing, say, well, I hear my, you. My, no, because you're being personal. Stop, but you're stop putting these. Oh. Like, is he, the, I don't think that people even hear anymore. You know what I mean? Like, remember before, like, before there was a switch, everybody was all in this phone, like, they still had, like, house phones. That point when they still had house phones, 
you were still kind of like engaging. And right now, like it's just so easy Everybody for people to just. Me. And now you're taking it. And well, you're well, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest with you. What I feel is going on that you just don't have no respect for your partner. And I'm gonna tell you why. For an example, because you got respect for your boss. If your boss tell you to do something, you have no problem doing it. But I, I guess it's about the money, though. It's about the money. But if your partner tell you and you ask you, some majority of the time you don't be on time. Um, you you always got excuse. Are y'all victims of that? Be honest. Okay, what I feel like we keep doing, let's just try to find another subject instead of love and heartbreak because what we're gonna get into here is I've already sat back and said there is no short of a good man. There is no short of a good woman. And oh, okay, us, but guess what? Spewing, so you avoid the question. Us spewing, us spewing our rhetoric about you know, how we feel about this. If we want to get into cer certain detail and topic exclusively, that's one thing. But I feel like there's been nothing but adoration for um, men and women across the globe. I feel like it just takes, when we're talking about communication, when we sit back and say, we have to stop, we have to try to utilize what we say, mean what we say and say what we mean, instead of, oh, I mean to say that. And now it seems like you're, just brushing it off and you're just sweeping it off like it doesn't mean anything because you didn't take the time to sit back and say, this may hurt them. Going back into what you're saying, you should have thought about that before, but then you know how good it feels to have that damn, I, to that I told you so feeling, but you don't say it to anybody because you become the you master. Gotta say you You've become say the master of your own destiny. And the thing is, there's no short of good men, no short of good women. At the end of the day, the communication lies with what about yourself are you willing to, it's not what you bring to the table. Which it's what you, problems. it's what you get rid of so you can eat comfortably. Mm -hmm. So if you come there, hunchback of Notre Dame, and you got all this baggage on your shoulder because the last brother and the last of this and the last of this, and now you want to come eat at this table, but you ain't much want to walk, put your bags down, take your shoes off, wash, now your nails all dirty, but you can't eat with us. Now you think it's a, it's a problem because you've yet to drop your baggage. It's not what you bring to the table sometimes or most of the times because you know where you can build your own table you've seen how the formula is created you know exactly what needs to be done so don't blame someone else for the the, the the same decisions or choices that you're making to sit back and say oh well this didn't work out like this well guess why because i didn't realize that i had to give them 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 uh, uh their love language because your love language wasn't the same if you're not willing to fit into it unanimously or or become a part of it, like we're all basically empty space. But if you're not even willing to be fluid in the space that we do have together, do you understand what a burden that is? We are made up of empty space. And so the little bit of space I give you, you can't even, that's why it's so important to just say, you know what? For me, I'd rather have a male. I don't mind them having females. More hands around the house, more little people, you know, more legacies, more more minds to mold, you know, even if it's adoption, because y'all act like y'all wanna just keep running around here and smashing and, and, and procreating. And really, like, y'all been drinking doggone chloroform and birth control water for like 38, for 116 years. Like we're we're not doing anything more than just going back and forth with whose responsibility it is, not realizing the one that gave birth is still the one that's come on, man. I can't have no, this but, birth without. But I'm just saying though, people. you know, it, to me it's not about going back and forth. It's just a question that I'm not even getting a, a full answer with. You know, sometimes and I think that's one of the biggest problems is is that people don't want to admit really that, you know what, I am a victim of that. You know what I'm saying? If I really think about it, when it did come to my communication, I always had the intent to react instead of the intent to really listen to what that person had to say to really try to figure out what can we do to better ourselves. And that's one of the main parts, the reason why relationships don't last. Yeah. <laughs> And then, then the partner going run off the screen. Now we mad at each other. So I'm going to run the streets now. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And all this could have been avoided. And we had just sit back and realize that maybe it's something. Why can't I listen? 
Like, let's just say, for an example, uh, this guy going to take you out on a date, right? You don't even notice, but he already got the restaurant planned out at a certain time, right? He gets to your location, and um, you're not ready. You, you've been knew about this date a long time ago, but as soon as he says something to you, you get upset at him, right? And then it's almost like, oh, you know what? Now it becomes a big argument. But you had no clue that he had a certain time that y'all needed to be this restaurant. And I see that happens in a lot of cases. You know what I'm saying? But it's when almost was the last like, time you called somebody and they didn't get to the restaurant on time because you booked something, but you was mad late because you was ripping and running the streets. And now it's everybody. Bro, at the end of the day, a restaurant going to be right there. If you know every if you wanna if you wanna book a restaurant and you're late to get into the restaurant, guess what you do? Go to the back of the restaurant, talk to the cooks, talk to the people in the back, and make friends with people in the back so you can get people in the front of the house. Stop being stupid. We work food and bev all the time. This is Charleston, South Carolina, baby. Get with the program and get lost. Bye. Next question. <laughs> yeah. So, but you, but question. guess what? You might have hurt question. that person's feeling because back, all you also where are we supposed also, to be. Let me, let me say something. Say it, man. If the person had a date already planned out for a woman, he need to be able to know this woman. Is this woman always late to every day? Or is she like to be on time? If That's you know where she's the 20 late, questions go in. You have to certify yourself. Going back to what I said, you need to question yourself. Would you date yourself? Would you date yourself? I would date myself. Okay, wait a minute. But guess what? <laughs> yourself is going to cook and cook, but don't hmm. I clean. I just no, 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 I'm, I'm, no, I'm, no, this is just jokey. I'm just saying. Just I'm just saying. I know what I'm saying. No, because going back to what I said, if the person who cook in my house doesn't clean, so just imagine if you're gonna cook that night, you don't want to clean. You know what yeah. I mean? And you know what I mean? Like you want someone who's gonna be able to say, "Don't worry, I got it," or something like, "Oh man, it's still stinking here. Oh, you deserve to do everything." Do you want somebody who's gonna chop your clip? Like it's, it's just. Yeah, you have to say, "What am I in the one, three, and five? Do you yeah, have a hobby? You figure out yourself and somebody." Yeah. You with somebody, and y'all together for a long time. That person should be able to. Do you remember you Eric Legrand? I don't know who that is. Eric Legrand. Do you remember Eric Legrand? Mm -hmm. Okay, Eric Legrand used to um, play football, and um, he was actually going out to be a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. And I want to tell the story because my dad tried out for Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Okay. Um, and he went to go make a play, and when they sacked him, you could see on the play that he went paralyzing. Paralyzing from the neck down. Now imagine you as a parent seeing your child go from yeah, 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 and almost getting ready to go into their, their career field to not even being able to lift a toothbrush. He's still he's still a Tampa Bay Buccaneer is what I'm saying. You have to give way to things that you don't think that you know are good for you because you're so used to, oh, it's going to mess up, it's going to mess up. And just because that play may have never seen him on the football field, he still saw his goals accomplished. Now, as a mother, and as a mother, not watching your child do the things they love anymore, but they're still, what, a part of something great. Mm -hmm. So guess what? Sometimes letting go of the things that we thought from our trauma and just saying, hey, it was actually never really my fault. I was just a kid. But then you sit back and, but I should have known. You should have known to just be a kid. Let it go, but understand why you feel that way when it happens. Don't let it go. Realize what it is. And at the end of the day, he still is believed. Like, Eric Legrand is still, he still has his position as a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. He's getting paid for this. Because you have to believe in self. You have to believe that everything that you went, sometimes those tornadoes and those cyclones come through to clear a path for the new beginning, not to just destroy everything in front of you. It's really not about destruction. God, natural disasters from the earth. Man, it's, some, it's, such, it's something so beautiful about having it's a harvest water. and going back through. And you know what? Our bodies in the earth, it, we're energies, neither created nor destroyed, only rearranged. So if we want, it was never Tupac versus Biggie. It was Tupac and Biggie. Be the change you want to see in the world. Change one step at a time. I don't care if somebody call you a big black nose. Don't nobody got time for that. Smile at them, hail at them, and keep on going. As long as you don't touch me, we're good. But the communication is, it's not instigating if you want to say, well, why would you say that to me? Because you need to know. Why would you say that? You don't got to swing off on man. 
maybe they're on bad meds. Maybe, maybe shit does all them. But like at the end of the day, like I have bad communication skills, and this is why we're able to sit here and talk with one another more calm than any sitcom or reality TV that I've ever seen, and be able to talk to each other one on one about things that are actually going on in our mm-hmm. lives. And as a as a young man, I know raising your children is not easy and trying to be in this world isn't easy. And this is where we sit back and we communicate with one another. I always easy. enjoy your presence. It was so much fun. Um, but we have to realize it's it's not about the other. You have to be able to yin and yang yourself so much that that external stimuli does not affect you. It's not about what they do to you. It's about how you react to it. So don't. It may seem nonchalant. It may seem like you don't care, but do you want an ulcer? Do you want to calcify your pineal gland? Do you want? Do you need? Do you need that type of negative energy in your life to bring your? There should be everything elevation, everything enlightenment, everything exuberance, everything in and above. Like, because everything as is above is below. So if it's miserable up here, it's gonna be miserable down there. You can create your own hell if you like. So stop feeling like it's man or woman that's the issue. Self is the issue. Self is the issue. Because well, you, well, never, you would never I create feel, I don't feel like it's, it's myself now because I just stay away from, you know, it's, it's hard out here, basically. You know what I mean? It just ain't, it's just not easy, you know, to, because uh, you just don't know what you're getting when you, when you get too serious with someone. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel, I think y'all have experienced that too. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just don't know what you're getting. You know what I mean? Everything good at, at the beginning, and here comes the problem. I want everything. I want liquid smoke. I want pop smoke. I want D smoke. I want the smoke. He smoke, she smoke, I smoke. Yeah, but too much smoke is too much. Size, though. I wear a size much, three and a half weeks in um Mumbai, Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Dubai. I ain't think I can handle the pressures, man. Too much for me. You know what? The thing about it, Larry, um, Ari Lennox can handle the pressure. We ain't no pipes. We out here. We just trying to go out and explore the world and love and integrate into the world where, you know what, you'll probably see that American girls and European girls and African girls and, and Arctic girls. And, and the only thing different about any girl is the fact that she's no longer a girl, but she's a woman. So respect a woman when you see one. Stop calling us all girls. We're not girls. At the end of the day, you know what they do with girls? I'm not saying that no woman ain't never been snatched, but you never taught your group of women to not be ran over and pillaged and raped. So if you want to sit back and wonder why we're so strong, it's because when we're, we've been beating y'all off instead of fucking trying, instead of figuring out when we were going to have to actually come together so we could be a unit again. We don't want to see y'all in these tombs anymore, these catacombs that y'all in. You're in a catacomb in your mind and people are in a catacomb and we over here worried about, no, it's, 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 there must be more unity than this. And I do not downgrade anything you're doing, ability. I, I love what you're doing. We have to speak openly. We have to see the perspective from everyone's side. But at the end of the day, the moon you see up there, feminine. The earth that you live in, we plant seeds in, you give it to a woman, they multiply it. Definitely a woman. I need the, the we need the respect, you as well. Because if you don't, if we're not able to, it doesn't matter. You know you got you know you got God TTs right here. We gonna take it. You know what I mean? We are gonna be right here when you call on us, cause we are the village. We are the community. We are speaking about topics that people need to hear about. They don't see us yelling all over the screen, acting crazy. We're able to speak and talk to one another and and have our moment. But at the end of the day, we you, said still, we're got, to be you still got right family now. right here. You still got family <laughs> right here. And if we see somebody not treating you with the respect, I I feel like you need a little bit more love. I feel like you need a little bit more love because you're saying, what if I'm just treating you right? What if I'm just what if I'm just treating you right, but you want more? What's your love language? How can I treat you better? How can I exist on a platform bigger than that? How can I exalt you to the most? How can I do that for you? What would that feel like for you to be put on something bigger than just being treated good? One plus one is one. <laughs> Like honestly, yeah, I think, so you I would think just that. you would just like to be treated. 
oh, I'm the one, I'm good. In the back of my mind, like now you want to question me about, no, I want to be able to do your feet so you can do my feet so we can laugh and, and, and throw silly. Yeah, let's go outside and go get a t-shirt and like slap paint around. Like just be yourself, be a kid again, love again. Stop acting like it's got to be so, oh, I got to protect and provide. You know what you can protect and provide me with? Support. I want to see you laugh. I want to see you smile. I want to see you be a kid again. I want to see the joy in your face that, that, that brought your mother when you first came into this world. Like, why can't we just understand that, like, these, we've been repressed children. Stop acting like we don't want to just laugh and paint and frolic. <laughs> But we got a frolic, and you deserve that, baby. We're not gonna let. Hey, listen, we don't want you to have nothing else but a frolic, 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 frolic. Here, 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 frolic. A frolic. Wait, wait. So frolic. yeah, definitely, definitely. Yo, this been this been a great conversation. So I got. Let me see. One minute, fifty eight seconds. I'm gonna run it to, to two more minutes, and I'm gonna go ahead and close out on this because. I run my videos like sixty seconds on the podcast. Make sure you get my number too, because you gotta. We gotta link. Definitely, 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 definitely. And hey, what's up with Don Tyler? You know I got a belt with your name on it. Huh? I got a belt with your name on it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's a word. I got a switch with your name on it. Hey, I'm about to turn that Because <laughs> the Lord said, just do unto thee as you want them to do unto them. <laughs> what's the high <laughs> sign? <laughs> I know boy can't stand me. <laughs> boy, Shit, boy, boy can't stand me. That's real. That's real. Well, yeah, this has been definitely a great podcast. But we just talk about real life, though. You know, my mindset, I'm just on a different... Um, you ever, like, I tell people, a lot of people trapped in a fishbowl. And when you trapped in a fishbowl, that's all you know is what your master middle. fed you in that fishbowl. When you don't travel in oceans, man, like, life experience is much more bigger than what we was taught. What's your nationality, your ethnicity? Puerto, Puerto Rican, Italian, and black. Oh, you got it. You got it. You got it, man. When you on the phone, I about to call you right back, right back. I'm playing. Hold up. Wait a minute. But there is some say Italiano in it. Hmm. You sound, you, you sound like you need to come get more food. Like, the next episode is going to be about food. But listen, the love that I have for you because there has been people who will curse your name any type of way, you know, then you got the Northern and Southern Italians. And then you have, oh, you too light skinned black, but you too dark skinned black, but you're not this, you're not that. You understand, you say, if I'm just treating you right, why is that not enough? Because you don't get to understand every part of who you are when you just say, oh, that's enough. That's that's doing the bare minimum. And you know what you can do the bare minimum and skate. You can skate and that's okay. But guess what you're not gonna do? Do the bare minimum for your seed. So why would your seed need to be ex just just profoundly just like, like why why would you why why wouldn't why wouldn't it be something that we would harvest and and why wouldn't it so you have you have the capability of realizing what I'm saying and I love everything that you do and I hope this reaches out to multitudes of people who need to hear it who need to understand that. I'm Mashi Tucker, Pequot Tribal Nation, and Gullah Geechee. Yeah, we own the Fossil Casino in Rhode Island. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I also, I sail the coast of right here in the low country, okay? But there's something so beautiful about who we are, and it is this right here needed to be said. And you need to know that you're loved, you're cherished, and adored. Happy New Year to you. Word, I love word. you with every fiber of my being, my soul. Thank you so much. Because... Again, we're not short of what? Any good women or any good men. If you are looking for a woman or you're looking for a man, say as such. But if you keep looking for niggas and bitches, excuse me, pardon me. If you're looking for girls and boys, then you sound like a ring, and I'm worried about that. But if you're looking to exalt yourself in a better way, speak highly about yourself when you're speaking about other people because you're only a reflection of the people that you see. I'm only a reflection of you know what I'm saying? If you see something that needs to get done, do it. You know, like, there's no need in coming to your house and be like, oh, this is a mess, when, like, oh, we threw it on the ground, and you didn't think it was going to pick itself up? You know, if you see somebody drop something, it's kind. Just just, just be whole with yourself. 
because one day you're going to be the only person on that. You're going to be only one measuring your own self on self. So we've, we've talked about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much for bringing yourself out. That was, I think people, need to, know that. I think mm -hmm. people need to know that. And that was very eye opening. And I think that that brings for me. Very, very eye opening. I'm gonna keep y'all posted once this up on my channel. And, um, uh, right. And y'all peep me out in Africa, man. Y'all go and check my channel out in Africa. Also, really you need go. to give me a number because I know, I know. Yeah, I'll give you this number. <laughs> I, listen, okay, so, okay, okay, okay. I want to saw some people. Hassan, Hassan, oh my God, I, 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 I Ooh, so Oh, man, I told you. Hello, we're live. We'll talk about it later. All right, we about to go. Hassan, hey, man, all right. All right, I'm going to catch y'all later. All right, bye. Bye. Peace. Come to Charleston South. King of travel, everywhere got a ghetto, everywhere got a slum, everywhere got rich people, everywhere got bums. Round and round, we go, round and round, we go. There's so much changes, but everything seems to be the same. Africa, man. You know what I'm saying? Over here in the village with the kids. You know how we do it, man. Africa, you know, so this is the real deal. Welcome to Africa. You know what I'm saying? Just doing a little tour with the king of travel, man. We, we just making it do what it do. You know what I mean? That's word.